Hi everyone, I'm Jared Revlet, the Public Information Officer for Owensboro Public Schools, and I'm joined here today by Miss Summer Bell. She is our District Mental Health Coordinator, and uh, that's something that we really want to take a minute to talk to everybody about today is the mental health aspect of, of what we're going through right now. Uh, it's an unprecedented time, and a lot of people aren't really familiar with uh, how to kind of handle a, a situation like this. So we want to take a few minutes to go through some steps of, of what mental health is, what it looks like, um, and how you can kind of cope with some of the things that are going on. So, uh, Summer, first and foremost, you know, you always hear people talking about, I have anxiety, and my kid has anxiety. What is anxiety? There seems to be so many different people that talk about it. What, what does that mean? Well, anxiety or being anxious is a feeling or emotion that most of us experience time to time. Uh, having anxiety is having an excessive amount of worry, nervousness, and even fear. And usually that's in regards to situations that uh, an individual can't control or a situation that's going to be uncertain to them. Sure. So, so that can take a lot of different forms. I mean, it's not necessarily you're just sitting in the corner biting your fingernails or, you know, kind of those things that you think of. What, what does anxiety look like both in adults and in, in teens and children? Right. And that's a great question. Anxiety is going to look different with every individual. Of course, you have your common signs and symptoms, which is some of the things you just mentioned. Uh, the panicky, the increased breathing, um, the excessive worry, the nervousness, maybe biting on your nails, fidgety. I'm guilty. Uh, I bite my nails. <laughs> uh, Sleeping, uh, having difficulty sleeping because those thoughts are pretty constant and they don't shut down at night. So then there'll be a disruption in the sleep. With uh, teens, sometimes and even young kids, we might see the opposite. We might see more of the anger and the irritability and maybe some defiance. And that's usually for the kids that have more difficulty expressing their emotions or openly talking about their emotions. So it comes out in more negative ways. Sure. So, you know, this type of thing that we're dealing with with the coronavirus and, and the uncertainty certainty of, of what's going on. What are some ways that people can, can deal with that anxiety once they maybe recognize the signs? What can they do to kind of cope with that? Yeah, and we're going to talk right now deep breathing, uh, practicing mindfulness, mindfulness and yoga are great techniques with helping with anxiety. So today I want to go over just a few coping mechanisms and demonstrate some of those deep breathing exercises. Let's do it. This is something you can do right now, you can do with your child at home. Um, as adults, take advantage of some of these coping mechanisms too and allow yourself to uh, calm down if needed. Uh, the first thing I want to demonstrate, these are just some deep breathing exercises, is what I call mountain breathing. I do these exercises pretty regularly with some of the high school students that I uh, see at the high school. So with mountain breathing, just work on your posture, sit up correctly. Uh, put no, your hand up. Right, sit up straight like that. <laughs> and that's going to help your overall breathing. Um, go ahead and put your hand out. And with that, you're going to, like this is mountain breathing, you're going to take a deep breath and then let down as you're going down the mountain. And each breath should probably take about five seconds. And you go back around. And usually when you do that, that's a you know, good minute or so of sure. breathing and relaxing. And that's a helpful technique. It's pretty easy to do. And that's something you can do outside. You can do inside. The kids can even do it when they get back in school in the classroom. Another one that I do like to uh, use, especially with high school students, too, is you're going to count backwards by threes from 100. And yes, this is going to take a little bit of thinking. But part of this is a distraction technique, too. Uh, and you're taking breaths as you're doing it. So you start at 100. Take a breath. 97. And 97. Got that one. 94. Yep. And I've done this enough, so I've yeah, memorized some of the numbers. Bad, I'm bad at math. <laughs> this is subtracting by three, so. And 91. And when I work with the uh, high school kids, usually when they get to 60, we're laughing. Um, yep. They're not breathing as fast as they were when they came in the office. They are more calm and their thoughts are more clear. Uh, if you can get all the way down to zero, that is fantastic. <laughs> that will definitely take a while, but that's another great one to do. Um, the last one I want to mention is a grounding technique. A grand, grounding techniques are fantastic to do with anxiety. It brings you back into what I call the here and now, the present moment, and that's going to involve our senses. So we're going to look around and you're going to look for five things you can see right now. Five things in the room. Okay. Well, nobody can see what's behind <laughs> us, but uh, there's an American flag. Uh, there's a nameplate, a microphone, a chair, and a photograph. Mm -hmm. And then four things you can touch. Four I, from where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. um, my knee, uh, this banner, my chair, 
and my shoe. Okay, three things you can hear. The air conditioner is going. Um, I hear a bird outside. Central office is kind of a ghost town right now, so there's not, not a whole lot that I can hear. But. Uh, and two things you can smell. And smell is a little bit yeah, more difficult. That's tough. And the taste is one thing you can taste. So. I just had some coffee, so I've got a little bit of that left, and uh, I just had a mint yeah. a minute ago. So. so that's a grounding technique. It's using our senses. It's another distraction technique. It brings you back in here and now, but five, four, three, two, one, awesome. using your senses. So those are some quick. Uh, deep breathing exercises and grinding techniques that help with anxiety. Awesome. Well, those are all tools that, that people can use to kind of bring themselves back to the here and now, like you said, but for some people, anxiety can be a little overwhelming. So when do parents maybe need to worry about either themselves or, or their children? Yeah, anytime that it starts interfering overall with the daily functioning. So you're noticing that the anxiety is not going away, the thoughts are becoming more obsessive, uh, the child's not sleeping anymore, just the overall uh, daily routine is being uh, just shattered. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. Nobody's got a routine anymore. Myself right. included. And that's good. And we do need to set a routine with our with our children and teenagers. Believe it or not, teens and children, they want a routine. They do seek that guidance. It's very important at this time. It doesn't have to be the exact routine they've been doing at school, but try to implement something within the home that provides that sense of normalcy for them. Sure. And so what else um, can, can people do, you know, if they've noticed, maybe they've seen a change in their in their child, maybe their behavior, or like you mentioned, if they're a teen, they've maybe have become angry, and or they're angry all the time and everything. I know I was kind of that way when I was a teenager, but what, what can they do, you know, if they see that change in their, in their students? Yeah, uh, one of the things I want to suggest first off is sit down and have an open conversation with your kid and with the teen and see if they're able to identify what that stressor is, what is causing that anxiety. Uh, then I'm going to encourage you uh, to reach out to your school counselors. We have a fantastic team of school counselors here and even family resource coordinators here at OPS. We're still working. Reach out. Send an email if we need to set up a time to talk with your student. We can do that right now if we need to check in with them. Um, but reach out with them. We have the knowledge and the ability to be able to refer out to community partners and we do that often. Um, whether that be outpatient community mental health, out counseling services, or even some case management services. Well, since you mentioned it, I want to touch on it now, but we'll, we'll hit it at the end as well. But you mentioned some of those resources. Is there a place that people can go to, to find a list of those resources um, that, if they need to go outside of the school district? At, all the school counselors right now have that list. Uh, family resource coordinators are also uh, fantastic about keeping those lists up to date. But if you feel at the moment that you need to get your child or teen or even yourself as a parent, uh, some outpatient counseling services, mental health services, definitely call the school counselor, send an email. Um, you can also email me, summer.bell at owensboro.kyschools.us, and we'll definitely lead you in the right direction with connecting you with mental health. Awesome. So we recently uh, announced that at the direction of the governor that our schools are going to be closed for an additional two weeks after our regularly scheduled spring break, which means 10 more non-traditional instruction days. And that's one of the things that a lot of parents have reached out to us and said, this is stressing me out. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to work the computer. I don't understand the packets. So what are some things that, can, that families can do to, to get some tips on how to help their students? Yeah. First of all, breathe. We're all, <laughs> we're all in the same boat yeah. and we're learning this together for sure. Uh, we have a fantastic team. I'm sure at this point you have heard from your child's uh, teachers, counselors, uh, multiple people within the district. So reach out to them. Let us be a support. But through all this, you know, another coping mechanism is talking to your support, leaning on your support, uh, even allowing your teen and, and children the ability to talk to their friends right now. So definitely rely on us. Let us help ease some of that stress, maybe clarify some questions that you may have. Um, and it's okay for child's getting frustrated or you get frustrated as a parent. Take a break. It was beautiful outside yesterday. It was. Um, go outside, and that's another great coping mechanism. Um, walk, run, bike. If you can have a dog or a pet, they're very therapeutic. Get out there with them. But just remember we're all a team. Everybody's routine at home right now is, it is different. So find that sense of normalcy and definitely reach out to the counselors and, and let us help you and let us be a support for you at this time. Awesome. So the last kind of thought here, you know, you mentioned the team. We've got a great team of mental health professionals in our district that are going out to try and make connections with students. If people maybe have an open case or they, or, uh, they want to uh, get in touch with the counselor, how would they go about doing it? 
Uh, you can call your child's school at the moment. They'll make sure that the counselor gets the, the message. Also, email is a really good way. I know myself and a few other counselors and family resource coordinators have been hitting the mobile lunch sites yep. um, as needed just to make a present and ha presence and handing out resource guides also about other resources that are in the community. Um, but the best bet right now to get in contact would be probably phone call or email. All right. So your email again? It is summer.bell at owensboro.kyschools.us. That's probably the best way to reach me. And like I said, if we, uh, we would love an opportunity if we need to meet with your student, uh, talk with your student. If the situation is stressful at home and you just want some extra support and somebody to talk your child through yep. uh, that current stressful moment or behavioral moment that they may be having, uh, definitely rely on us and let us let us assist you during this time. Awesome. And uh, the, the easiest phone number, if you want to get in touch, uh, that can put you in touch with anybody, is here at Central Office. That's 270-686-1000. And we have somebody answering the phones that can put you in touch with the right school as well. Summer, thank you very much for joining us. We hope this resource is useful to, uh, to everybody at home. And uh, hopefully we'll be back in school soon so we can have some of that face-to-face -face interaction that, that everybody craves. But uh, thank you again for joining us, and I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you.